I really can't make this up, yo. This story, Arnold Schwarzenegger, remember, he has a position of power in Los Angeles. He was furious, okay? Furious was the word used in the news about a pothole that he went out with other people to try and fix. And people tried to say there's some grandiose big thing. But honestly, does it sound grandiose that he was furious about one pothole in the city? How much other stuff as a person of power does he have to focus on? Let's get into it. Furious about a pothole. Let's talk about it. Because nothing, no furiousness is more scarier than God. Let's talk about his furiousness, right? And we're going to start. I'm actually going to start at Ezekiel. Verse, I mean, chapter 25, verse 17. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. Does that sound like a God that's lovey-dovey? He's talking about laying vengeance upon people. Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 15. Do it shall do it shall be a reproach in a taunt and instruction in an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury in, in furious rebukes, I the Lord have spoken it. See, God don't play. Arnold Schwarzenegger being furious is nothing compared to God being furious. Does that make sense? Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's furious. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 2. You remember this from the mocking of that movie. We're going to get into that. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth, the Lord revengeth, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and the he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Guys, we have to serve this God. He doesn't want to be furious at us. We are his children, okay? There are specific people on this earth who are here just to be a hindrance. And he knows him. He knows him by name. If you lump yourself with them, you will get these furious rebukes. And it's not a joke. And I'm about to read to you, but let's quickly go over here and read this. Let's, let's read about the ditch real quick, okay? Real quick. And we're going to go into two of these. Psalm chapter 7 verse 15. He made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made. That's what happens. Guys try and dig a pit to trip someone in to trick them to take them out. And they fall in it because they dug a ditch made for wicked things. Trying to plan out wickedness. Luke chapter 6 verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? You need someone that has vision to see in order to stay afloat. Like my thing is, there are people who have special things. But when you trust in God, he gives you vision to see beyond the sight in front of you. That's why a lot of evil people end up in horrible situations. They can't see in front of them. They don't even trust God. So who's leading you? It can only be Satan. No one else can lead you. You can't lead yourself without God. We need him to survive. Only he knows our beginning and end. The Alpha and Omega. It's in Greek mythology. You see it all the time. What is your confusion? If he says I'm the Alpha and Omega, that means I'm the beginning and the end. Meaning it started with me, it's going to end with me. What's hard to understand? There's nothing hard to get. People just don't want to get it. I'm telling you. And it's going to be bad for them. Very bad. All right, let's get into it. The one that I want to read to you. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 27. Starting at the 24th. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. And he she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. Wow, she also lieth in wait as for a prey and increaseth the transgressors among men who have woe, who have sorrow, who have contentions, who have babbling, who have wounds without cause, who have redness of eyes. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. People seek in perverse things for enjoyment, find a very deep ditch whether it's narrow or it's wide 
you still can fall in. Guys, he's not mocked. He's not mocked. Job chapter 9, verse 31. Starting at the 28th verse. I'm afraid of all my sorrows. I know that thou wilt not hold me innocent. If I be wicked, why then labor I in vain? If I wash myself with snow water and make my hands ever so clean, yet shalt thou plunge me in the ditch and mine own clothes shall abhor me? For he is not a man as I am that I should answer him and we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any days men betwist amongst us that might lay his hand upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me and let not his fear terrify me. Guys, there's nothing more terrifying than an angry God. You could be say anything scary. You haven't seen an angry God. You haven't seen it. You don't even see it because you're looking at situations happening to people around you. That's constitution behind the allowances of an angry God. If you're not serving him doing what he wants, his protection backs off and then the devil plays. That's what I'm saying. We must trust in him all times. Keep him near us. He is our protection. He is our defense. When you're going to fight, going to war without God, you're in danger. Don't matter how armed you are, you're in danger. He can make you drop dead for no reason while you're thinking to do that. Then you go to hell for thinking it without even doing it. Guys, this God is not a joke. We're getting there, yo. You haven't even... I haven't even read the scariest things to really check people. Psalm chapter 7, verse 15. We're starting at 12. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bit his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. He behold, the re revaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it. And is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealings shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And will sing praise to the name of the Lord. Most high God. And I added the God part. Because he is Lord of all guys. It's not a joke. He's for real. He's not playing. This story shows he, I told you, it's getting more serious. The further we get in, the more serious it gets, guys. It's not a joke. Luke chapter 6, verse 39. Starting at 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull the mote out of thy, is in thy brother's eye. Okay? We have, as I say, as I speak to me and speak to you. Likewise, we both are reading together. I'm reading with both of us getting understanding for what's being given, guys. We both have to do it. All human beings that are breathing, living, not in a grave, have to do this and know this before they leave or they'll be in danger of going to the pit. So that is the whole purpose, to prevent damnation for humanity. That's what this book does. This book saves your humanity. And you're being befoozled by the public to think otherwise. Matthew chapter 15. We will go into the 14th verse. Okay. Starting at 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth his defileth a man. When came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest that thou 
that the Pharisees were offended after they heard his sayings. But he answered and said, every plant which is in my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand what that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draw? We purge everything we eat. So there's an outcome for every action. That's why he said, basically he's telling them, turn the other cheek. That's what he's saying. They'll get their just due. The Pharisees were wicked doing evil things. Even though they're coming to do stuff to me, they're going to get their earnings and they got what they deserve a hundred times over. Because not only are you now dead, but you know in your death, you saw and looked in the eyes of the Messiah you helped crucify. It was debilitating. I'm sure that in their, in their heads, they were wishing themselves alive to do it over. People want to do things over, do it different. Do it with God. You don't have to do do overs. He'll help you do it right the first time. Stop. People like to lean on your own understanding. Stop. Trust in God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Say whatever name you want, but this is the truth. Rely on him. Guys, you can't rely on anything else. It's not going to work. It's not. We all have to come to this understanding. That is the realization the Bible tried to give the people. And people that received it, they're in heaven now. You got to understand, it is a trick. Everything tries to get you to go against the Bible. Everything. Don't. Stand on the word of God. And he'll stand on you. Last one. Isaiah. Chapter 22, verse 11, okay? Starting at eight. And he discovered the covering of Judah and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David that that they are many and they, they ye gather together the waters of the lower pool and ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping, and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth, and behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, and killing sheep, eating flesh, and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts, Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Like they're going in the battle. Like saying, we're, we're, we might die. How many movies do this? Where they're all cheering, saying we might die, but they're cheering. Guys, with God, he preserves life. Without God, you have no preservation. He is your life. He is your entity that wakes you up every morning, guys. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, right on time, right on time.